We are of another kingdom. As, as she was speaking, we are of the kingdom of God. Yes. And we should rejoice in that. Amen? Amen? The power of God, the strength of God. But one of the things she was presenting was how do we get there yes. as a church? How do we get there? And I think that's my message tonight. You know, there's always the one I prepare and then the one the Lord prepares in me. Amen. And, uh, you know, we had a guest speaker come through and say babies were coming to our church. And uh, she spoke about physical babies. <laughs> that wasn't, she wasn't talking in spiritual terms. But I want to talk in spiritual terms about the baby that each and every one of you carries. And you are pregnant. Everyone in this room, you are pregnant whether you realize it or not with kingdom purpose and kingdom assignment. And that's what I want to speak to. We're going to go to Haggai chapter 2. I don't think this prophecy was released in these terms, but I think it applies to us today. And it's chapter 2. Haggai the prophet is speaking. This is all rebuilding the temple, verses 6 through 9. For thus saith the Lord of hosts. Now that, I could stop right there and preach. The army of God. You've got to have fight in you tonight. Amen? Fight. Do I have any warriors in this house? Amen. Yeah. Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the, the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory. Everyone say glory. glory. Saith the Lord of hosts, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Now we have gone through shaking. Everyone has seen it. But World War II, I believe that this prophet was looking into World War II. The earth was not shaken from this prophecy until World War II happened. And the world was shaken. It was shaken to its core. And guess what we had following that as the body of Christ? Israel. We had Israel becoming a nation. Amen. <laughs> we, we had a move of God like we've never seen before. We had an outpouring. We had revival. Amen. Billy Graham came on the scene. Oral Roberts came on the scene. And there has just been a great shaking. And guess what is prepared out here? Harvest. We are looking for harvest, and I want to show you how to get it done because that word has gotten all over me, and originally I was, going to, I was going to preach on prophet, priest, and king, your three anointings, but the Lord messed me up. <laughs> so I have set watchmen, Isaiah 62 and 6. Do I have someone with a mic that can read scriptures for me? It's just going to help me go faster. 62 and 6. I'll read this one, but um, I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Everyone say watchmen. watchmen. O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. The Lord is looking for watchmen. He is looking for midwives. And, and, and there's someone in our church that's pregnant right now, and she's talking about that. And this is all speaking to me about, you see, I'm carrying a promise for a very long time that has not been fulfilled. And we all know that scripture, don't we? We can quote it by heart, half of it anyway, that it makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But what's the second part of that verse? Say that. Desire fulfilled is a wellspring of life. Desire fulfilled is a wellspring of life. Zoe life. And, and there is fulfillment. And I know, see, sometimes God does something in you that's happening. I am carrying a promise, and I am over pregnant, if that's even a word. <laughs> I don't know if it is. <laughs> but all I hear is push. <laughs> And, and, you know, how are we going to get there? Prophetic intercession. 
And that's going to cause your knee and my knee to hit the carpet and say, I'm part of this. Because how are we going to get it done? It's, we're, not, we're not going to wait for a sovereign move of revival. I'm waiting for the, the revivals of the past have messed us up. The Lord wants intercession to grip us, to pray, and to stand for a city and repent sometimes for a city that will not repent. We're going to sow that seed of repentance. Sometimes it moves into the room. I was in the Brownsville revival for, I spent two weeks there. It was a true revival. And, and what came in that room was repentance. It dropped on the room. You could have just got done, finished repenting for every sin you ever committed. And all you wanted to do was repent. It was awesome. <laughs> and see, a move of God. But guess what? In this move, it's going to be you and me it's crying out for where we're going. Amen. That's going to cost me something. It's going to cost obedience. Pregnant, full of meaning, highly significant in Webster's Dictionary. You are highly significant for the kingdom of God. And it is good. And the call, call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Where are the intercessors? I, I release to you prophetic intercession in this room as an impartation. We are going to pray in the next move of God. We are going to stand for righteousness. We are going to stand for holiness. We are going to stand for everything that the Lord has promised. And we might have to put, we might, to be a midwife is a serious commitment to see that baby come to pass, to see that child be birthed. And a, a woman could probably preach this better than me, but <laughs> amen. But it is all biblical language of how we are going to give birth. And when you give birth, all the pain and all the waiting isn't even a moment, is it? And that's where we're going. That's where we're going in this next move. And I, I just feel that on me so strongly. You know, to judge, one definition for judge is to set a matter free. You know, my brother used to get speeding tickets all the time. But when he went to go see the judge, he got free from them. God's judgment is his mercy. Thank God that I'm judged tonight so I don't have to be judged when there is no repentance. There, a white throne judgment where no one can ever repent. Father, right now we just pray as a church for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's what I've been looking for my whole life is a city whose builder and maker is you, Father. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for your presence. You will be honored with his presence. When you say, I will intercede. Amen. And this, this was him cleaning my clock and telling me what I have not been doing. So I am not coming in here saying that I'm in this place. I got, I got stuck. When I started to prepare this message, this is what came at me. And, and, and where am I going? I've got to get involved. I'm not just waiting for a sovereign move. Where most of the church is at is they're waiting for something to happen. Where are the watchmen, the intercessors? He marveled that there was no watchman on the wall. Psalm 127 and 1. Praise you, Jesus.
Sorry. <laughs> Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. It is going to be co-labored. Yeah. We're going to co-labor with him. It's not something we can do without him. The greatest sin in the Bible is to do God's will without him. And that's where intercession comes in. He won't, my prayers tell me where I'm at. My prayers tell me what I'm calling out for. And if you're not playing, praying in this climate and the shaking that's been going on, it's never going to happen. And I got called on the carpet with this very word. I can't, you know, I... Revelation 21 and 7. We must overcome. Praise you, Jesus. Am I speaking to anyone in this room? Praise your Father. Twenty-one and seven. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. You are an overcomer going somewhere to happen. Amen. Say that with me. I'm an overcomer going somewhere to happen. I have victory. I am a prophetic voice. Now the the prophetic voice has to be released because when it is, sin loses its power. And you have to begin to release that prophetic voice. And don't be afraid. And you will watch sin come to its knees. Like Peter. Set out your net for, for cast out your net into the deep. And Peter dropped to his knees after all the fish had come in and said, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. You must release the revelation that's inside of you. And, the, and sin will lose its strength. Sin will lose its power in the room. And don't you be afraid of it. <laughs> because it is awesome. Amen. And it's the revelation knowledge and the authority that's in each and every one of you that, that does that. Nathan, can any good, Nathaniel, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Jesus turns and looks at him and says, a man in who is no guile. He doesn't say, you liar. <laughs> and then Nathaniel calls to him and says, Thou art the Son of God, because he saw him under the tree. Yeah. He said, You believe I'm the Son of God because of this? You'll see greater things than this. Yeah. They were calling to each other. Yeah. Your prophetic gift yeah. will call the eminence out of someone else. Yeah. To see God in someone else is to be prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. Any donkey can bray. And say, this is wrong and that's wrong with the church. Right. But what makes me a man of God is I see God inside of you. Yeah. And I call it forth. Yeah. I see. I can see that way. I can see the way he sees you. You must have that in a, in a prophetic call. To, to pull that out of someone else. And, and some of us, we have, not we have not received that for ourselves. And we can't give it to someone else. So, Father, I just pray right now for every heart in this room to receive who they are. Who they are. Clear away everything, Lord. I call them forth. I call them forth. There are situations that you need to be releasing the revelation that is inside of you. Amen. And praying the revelation inside of you. I release strategies and assignments. Unusual assignments. Unusual prayers. Dangerous prayers that come from the secret place. That, does anyone ever wonder why he, we don't get details? I've got the big picture. I know what he's called me to do, but I don't get any details. He wants my participation. 
He wants my imagination. He wants me to craft this thing with him. He does not want to do it without me. That I have fought him on the most. <laughs> because we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the power and the excellency may be of him and not of us. And no matter what happens tonight, I'm still an earthen vessel. And I've got to come to terms with that. But it's about him. It's all about him. Father, I thank you that watchmen on the wall are being called out tonight. And we are a purpose-driven church, not a performance. We are purpose. We are, there is a purpose that is greater and bigger than us. The times when I've just stepped out a little bit, Lord, you've come through. And you've shown me who you are. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Let's just begin to pray right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Father God, you have come in and you have turned our tables over so that we can bear fruit for the kingdom. You come in with a whip and you've turned the tables over. How could I be at rest? How could I be so at rest when what is happening in this world? Father, turn my tables over. But the very next day, he healed many. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're going to reshape us and remold us into your picture. I paint a new picture upon your people. A picture of impact, which is the name of this place. Impact. You are an impact going somewhere to happen. You are going to pull, come away from this place with new energy to impact because of the revelation that has been released. And each one of you has that inside of you. We thank you for that, Lord. We begin to re re reveal your revelation. Loose the revelation of God. <laughs> Lord, we intercede for the lost, Father. We thank you for the church arising. We thank you for ministries coming together, for streams streams that run together to release who you are. I've got five-fold glasses on at all times. I see the apostle. One cent. The grace of one cent can be on you when you start a business. The grace of a prophet can be on you when you say, thus saith the Lord. The grace of an evangelist, the longest finger. The grace of a pastor, some will never stand in a pastoral office, but you tend and care for others. The grace of a teacher gets the nooks and crannies and grounds us. Let them arise, Father. Lord, we need the teachers. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I loose your authority tonight. Everyone just stand. We worship you, Father. We are rewarded with presence when we, when we co-labor with you. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. What a privilege. What a privilege. What an honor. Thank you, Father, that we begin to see and there's a turn. A turn, Father. To stand in the gap, to intervene is to change. We change others because we can stand in the gap for them. We're not praying what they should be doing. We're standing in the place of them. That's intercession. I can feel what's coming against them. I can feel the, the onslaught of the enemy. I get to know someone in the spirit when I pray for them as an intercessor. My mother is an intercessor. 
and she knows people by the Spirit after praying for them, she doesn't pray carnal prayers. Allow the pastor to do this more. Allow the pastor to do that more. No, I lift that person up. I stand in the place of that person, and I feel everything that's coming against that person, and that's the prayer that's going to change a city. That's the prayer that's going to set people free. You see, it's not a comfortable message because it, it requires something from me. Lord, I repent for my own lack of prayer in these seasons where I have not said yes to you, Lord. I have not said I will stand in the gap. I will witness. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I just... Uh, I want to go ahead and close, but I am open to anything that's on anybody's heart. I know there's teams in here. I am not a, a one-man show, and I don't believe in that at all. So if you have anything on your heart and you'd like to share, if the Lord's spoken to you, uh, I just want to open it up. Praise you, Father. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Father. For the presence of God. That's not a five-fold ministry gift. The presence of God. <laughs> it's tangible. It's tangible. Sometimes it's not even faith because he comes in the room so strong. And I loose that to live big on every person in this room. Presence. Presence is a weapon. It's who he is. Yes.